banana bread, I think, is still having a moment because people, I think, were maybe a little enthusiastic and were trying sourdough and then realized maybe that's a lot to take on and settled on banana bread, which is a great sweet spot because it's easy and delicious and comforting and that's what I'm making today. Hey everyone, I'm Claire Saffitz. We're in my home kitchen and today I am making maybe the most comforting recipe besides my mom's poppy seed cake. I'm making almond butter banana bread. It is easy, quick, delicious, comforting, freezable, shareable. Delicious. That's it. Bananas are divisive, but I like banana flavor a lot, but I'm very particular about the state in which I will eat a banana. And in fact, I ate a banana for breakfast for a very long time with peanut butter on it. And actually it's kind of like what inspired this recipe. But the window for me for eating a banana is like 12 hours. And if I miss it, what am I gonna do with my then overripe banana that I don't wanna eat? So I make banana bread. I'm really happy with this recipe. I tweaked it a lot. I spent a lot of time testing it. I think it's kind of a unique spin on banana bread because of the almond butter, which makes it a little savory, but doesn't steal the spotlight from banana. I think it should be just sweet enough, but not so sweet that you couldn't have it like literally any time of day. Breakfast, lunch, dinner. Lunch, dessert, breakfast, dessert, dinner, dessert. No special equipment for this recipe. It's also important to me that a quick bread, which is the kind of recipe that, uh, that banana bread is, is really easy to assemble. So you just need a couple bowls, a whisk, and you will need a standard size loaf pan. And that's it for special equipment. Oh, some parchment paper. I have all the ingredients here. There are many, many swaps that you can make for the ingredients. So I'll talk about easy substitutions that you can make. But for today, I'm making the recipe as written in the book. I have almond butter, and you'll see I have a couple of things measured out twice because I use them in multiple places. But I have almond butter, baking powder, all-purpose flour, vanilla extract, coconut oil, granulated sugar, baking soda, two large eggs, a bunch of very ripe banana, Greek yogurt, plain, cardamom, and kosher salt. I knew there was one I was missing, kosher salt. Like any good quick bread, it comes together easily, you just need two bowls, and the thing gets in the oven in a relatively short period of time. You do just wanna make sure that you have actual overripe bananas that have been sitting on your counter, because it's not a super sweet recipe, so it needs that extra sweetness from an overripe banana that has all those sugars in it. The first thing I wanna do is prepare the pan and preheat the oven. I have an oven rack in the center, and I preheat to 350, our sort of standard cake baking temp. And now I like to line my loaf pans with parchment paper and it makes it easy to lift. Not only does it make, mean that the banana bread doesn't stick, but it makes it easy to lift it out and unmold it. So I have a piece of parchment that I cut to the same width as my loaf pan on the bottom, if you can see that. I have my coconut oil here. So I'm just brushing a thin layer, Let's lay that sheet inside like so. Smooth out any areas where there's like an air, air pockets. And now the shorter sides stay unlined and then, but that's okay. And now you use the parchment like this to lift out the bread. Now then I'll just add a little more oil to grease the parchment paper. I'm going to mix this topping that goes on the top of the banana bread. So I have I'm using a mixture of ingredients that already are inside the banana bread to create this crunchy, swirled, sweet topping. So I have a little bit of granulated sugar, about a tablespoon. Then I have three tablespoons of almond butter. I'm gonna combine these. Then one teaspoon of coconut oil. Now this addition, I'm just gonna eyeball this. Stir it really well, make sure that you don't have stubborn lumps. You want something smooth like this. So set this aside. Let me make sure I did that right. And did I get everything? One teaspoon of coconut oil. Yep, okay. So I need about a cup of mashed banana. I'm gonna start with these three and see 
what I get. These could even be more ripe. They could be, you know, often I like to see little blackened spots on the actual bananas. Just try not to use them when they're green, you know, then they're definitely not ripe enough. A potato masher is a weirdly useful tool for baking. It really helps, because a lot of times you're, try you're trying to mash things. This looks good. You can see that it's like it's a little lumpy, but the lumps tend to just smooth out and disappear in the batter as it bakes. So now let me just measure out a cup. I might have to mash a little of that last banana. Also, a little more or less is fine. Uh, all right, I'm out of cup. Starting with my flour, I have one and a third cups, all purpose. Banana bread is a great application for playing around with different flours. It's also a great application for gluten-free baking. So you can use a gluten-free mix in place of all purpose. You could substitute some whole wheat flour. You can substitute some buckwheat flour, which would be a great addition in terms of flavor. Just know that if you use either gluten-free or like a, a different whole grain flour, you are gonna have a denser, not quite as light and fluffy banana bread. So then a teaspoon of kosher salt. There's something that is really, really delicious about like a salty nut butter or a sweet salty nut butter. A teaspoon of baking powder, then a half teaspoon of baking soda. And I am adding a little bit of a warm spice to this recipe. I'm using cardamom. Cinnamon is of course a lot more typical. You can use cinnamon, you could use nutmeg, you could use like in one of those pre-mixed, you know, pumpkin pie spice things. The warm spice is totally up to you. So, and it just a quarter teaspoon. Cardamom is a pretty assertive flavor, and it tends to cut through and come to the foreground in a recipe. Cinnamon is a little bit different. Cinnamon tends to stay in the background. So if you want to use cinnamon instead, go with like a full teaspoon, I think. So now whisk all of this together. So I'm starting with the eggs. I have two large eggs. So whisk this to break it all up. I tend to go in a little bit of an order because you get a more homogenous mixture that way. So I start with the eggs and then I add the sugar to the eggs. This is just a method of combining everything that is very seamless and smooth. Okay, so go ahead and whisk the eggs and sugar together. Once you have something that's slightly thickened and a little bit light, like that. I'm going to add my other liquid ingredients. You'll notice that in a lot of the recipes, there's one ingredient used a couple of different ways. So I have the almond butter topping and then almond butter inside to give flavor. And anytime I have a topping of any kind or a decoration, it's important to me that what's on top and visible is cueing you to what's inside. Then I have some Greek yogurt. You could use sour cream. You could use crumb fresh. You could use regular yogurt, you know, not Greek, but plain, not sweetened, that's important. Then mashed banana, throw that in there. Whisk to combine. If you have lumps in your almond butter, they're not gonna go away when you do this, they're just gonna stay, so make sure everything is smooth. Unlike the banana, the lumps won't really disappear. And then stir in your coconut oil. This is still liquid, so if it has solidified, warm it up slightly and whisk that until the oil incorporates. You don't want like a layer of oil sitting on top. You want a smooth mixture. Oh, my vanilla, I forgot about vanilla. How much vanilla? A teaspoon, okay. One thing you will need is a skewer or a toothpick or even just a thin little paring knife. This is what I'm gonna use to swirl the topping. You don't really have to do this, but I usually just make a little well for the wet ingredients. So pour the liquid in. Then to bring this together, whisk the mixture starting from the center, slowly incorporating the flour. So once the flour disappears, you're done. So I just folded with the spatula and scraped to make sure that I don't have any hidden pockets of flour anywhere. This goes straight into my pan. 
So now I'm gonna make my swirl topping. I love how this looks and I love the texture that it creates. So this is my almond butter, sugar, and coconut oil mixture. And I'm gonna take it and just make little dollops on top of the batter. This is random, doesn't really matter. Use all of it, use the full amount. Try not to dribble it on the parchment paper like I've just done. Once you have all of that topping on the surface of your banana bread, take your skewer or take the tip of your paring knife or your toothpick and start to swirl. I like to make figure eights, but you can really kind of be very haphazard about it. And it looks better when you're not like trying too hard to make it look pretty. My oven is preheated. This is gonna go straight in. And this bakes for the better part of an hour at 350. And I want the top to be risen and a little bit split, which is sort of, you know, the classic shape for a quick bread. And then I'll test it to make sure nothing is sticking to the skewer. And that's how I know it's done. So we waited an hour. I'm going to check on the banana bread. I checked it 10 minutes ago and it was not done, but it's done now. I shouldn't unmold it right now because it's very delicate. When some cakes and the like come out of the oven, they're super delicate and they need a chance to cool and for some steam to escape and for the crumb to set. I've just been sitting here scraping off some of that almond butter topping and eating it as I let this cool. But I am proud of myself because I exercised tremendous patience and let it cool completely. So I have it on the cutting board. I'm gonna slide the parchment out from underneath. Okay, so I'm gonna cut it right down the middle. I like a center cut banana bread. All right, so there it is. It smells so good. It's perfectly baked. So it's baked fully all the way through. Use a bread knife. It's just gonna give you a nice slice. It's always nice when I like make the recipes after a while and I'm like, it's a good recipe. Just gonna break it apart. Pull off a piece of the topping. Mm. So much of the sweetness from this recipe comes from the bananas themselves. It has a really pronounced but not cloying banana flavor and I think Part of that is having the somewhat savory, toasty almond butter in the background. So rather than being able to pick out all the individual flavors, like, oh, there's the chocolate, there's the banana, there's the you know, nutmeg or whatever, it's really harmonious. And yet, I know there's almond butter in there. I get a little bit of the cardamom. It's just super solid and delicious. I hope you give it a try. Another great recipe from Dessert Person, if I do say so myself. Thank you for watching. We're gonna have more to come and like and subscribe. I'm, like and subscribe is not my favorite way to end a video. It's just easy. Could I get you to say, <laughs> smash that like button? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. What about ring that bell? Ring that bell. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't know what that means. All right, just say smash that like button. No. Like button? and subscribe. Sorry guys, I tried. <laughs>